Okay, I think we're live now. Uh, this is Britt and Clint. Hey. What day is it, Britt? Thursday? I don't even know. It's Thursday, November 17th. We're live at Harp Design Co. And uh, we are in the finishing shed. That's right. This is Britt's world. This is where he hangs out all the time. We built this for Britt, in fact. Uh, he doesn't really get along with people. That's and true. so it was causing a lot of stress and tension in the shop. And we kind of needed to, you know, separate him. Things would get violent every once in a while. It was ugly. It was ugly. Yeah. And so we made him his own little home, and now he's here. Uh, Britt is the nicest guy you'll ever meet, and calm, uh, and this is the perfect place for him, actually. Yeah, you love it over I here. I love it in here. It's yeah, great. It's yeah, great. It is really nice. Yeah. So what we're going to do today is uh, just kind of show you guys what uh, we do when it comes to finishing our furniture. Now... Today is not a stain tutorial or a painting tutorial or a distressing tutorial. As you can see, this bench right here, it has already been painted, it's already been distressed, um, and all that jazz. Today, we're skipping all those steps and going straight to the final coat, which for us is a uh, coat or two coats of uh, a water-based polycrylic, uh, and we do a uh, satin finish. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Britt here is going to sort of answer some questions on that, and uh, we'll go from there. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So Britt, we're applying satin polyurethane, water-based polyurethane to this bench. What do we do? What do we? How do we start? Surface. Yes. So we just want to make sure that our bench top or tabletop is completely clean of any sort of debris. Debris. <laughs> So dust, <laughs> any any sort of fugitive dust. Fugitive dust. Yes, that is the word we're yeah. Uh, yeah, talking about. Yeah, we got to keep that away. So surface prep yep. is number one most important thing. Take your time. We wipe it down with. We do mineral spirits. Mineral we get spirits. Nice and clean. There you go. Uh -huh. What's the last grit of sandpaper you use on this painted so, bench? Yeah. So on this, we'll do a three twenty grit. So a yeah. three twenty grit finished. Uh, uh, our, our sandpaper uh, run is what mm -hmm. we do before we put the polyurethane on it. Now, yep. when we have a stain top, Demi, over here, that's the stain top bench over there. What's the grid that we use on that? Yep. What, is it 320 we'll go, yeah, 320, we'll go to 400. So, we easy. might go to 400 yeah. on that. Okay. So, you sand it, you wipe off the sand, but we blow it here. We actually have um, a air a, uh, air nozzle. It's like a gun, and uh, it shoots. It's yeah. It'll it'll it's it'll nice blow your easy. beard off. I'm yeah, not gonna it'll, lie. Yeah. it'll do it. Yeah. It'll take you straight off. Straight off. That's how I shave in the morning. Yeah. I just, yeah. Yep. Yep. Done. And uh, and so we use that, and that will totally get rid of like a lot of dust. But mm -hmm. then the mineral spirits, that really kind of gets everything cleaned yeah. up. Yes. Yeah. So once it makes its way into the finishing shed, we'll get mineral spirits on it, clean it up, and then it's ready for, for poly. And it's ready to go. Okay, Britt, we're applying poly. We're at five minutes, so we're going to try and be quick here. Yeah. Quick. I've had a good time just kind of bantering, uh, right. but now we'll get to work. All right. So, Britt, show me what we're going to do right. here. So, we're going to load the brush with poly. We're going to load the brush. We've already mixed the polyurethane, okay? That's obviously very important. All right. Yeah. Britt's loading up the brush. Now, on the, do we put the same amount as thick a coat on a painted top as we do a stained top, or is it a little thinner? It's a little bit thinner. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we can do a little bit thinner just for the paint. On yeah. There. Um, so we're just loading the brush. You don't want to... You're just fighting against bubbles, so you don't want a lot of bubbles. So, ah, okay. Yeah. So we're loading the brush, and then we're just going to start applying. I usually do a pretty good, you know coat on here, back and forth, and then we'll go over it with a just one pass skim coat. Okay, so now here's something really important to, to point out. As you can see, Britt is applying the polyurethane to the bench, and here, you know, it's a, it's a bit choppy, and he's going to, you can, you, if you were to look closely, you'd be able to see where he's stopped with the brush, okay? Now, that is very important, because what you don't want is exactly that. You don't want to see where you have stopped your brush stroke and then started back up again. So what Britt does is he applies a coat really quickly to a certain section of the bench, 
Okay? Well, she's almost done doing that now. And now, watch what he does. He is going to go the entire length of the table from right to left or whichever direction you prefer. Boom. Just like that. So he's going to do an entire, just like this. We kind of call it the ice skating motion. You just sort of like here, boom. Well, it's kind of a good workout. I usually put on my cross trainers and I get to work. And I feel like you lose at least two or 300 calories um, when polyurethaning is going by the ice skater method. That's right. So that's really one of the most important things is, is you kind of have to move quickly. It's usually good not to have an idiot like me standing in your way um, so that you know, you're not bumping into me and having to stop. But that's a very important tip, guys, is that when you polyurethane anything, you can put it on there, you can kind of just, you can really get crazy with it. We don't put a real thick coat on this, but if you were using a thick coat, you can throw it all on there, as choppy as you want, but the last time you touch that surface should be one constant motion from left to right, so that you get a very clear glass finish. Now, we're going to sort of speed through the last bit of it. After this, it's going to dry. We are going to take a 320 grit. Sometimes you can use 220 or 320 or 400, okay? And after this dries, between the first and second coats, you're going to sand this off. We do it by hand. We sand it. You don't sand the polyurethane all the way off. You just rough it up, the entire thing, consistently. Then you take your spray nozzle. You blow it all off again. Make sure all that dust is gone. After that, you take your mineral, spir mineral spirits and you wipe all of that off again. Let the mineral spirits dry, and then you apply your second coat of polyurethane. You will be amazed at how smooth that top is after the second coat. The first coat, you know, it, it, it looks smooth, but you touch it, and it's actually pretty rough. But something magical happens. There's probably some out, someone out there that knows a little bit more about polyurethane and the scientific stuff behind it. I don't know what happens, but let me tell you, it gets really, really smooth after that second coat. And so you can, Clint, there's okay, a question. question. Um, yes. Someone tuned in late and they're wondering, are you using the poly alone or is there anything you're mixing it with? We don't mix anything with it. I have heard of people actually watering down their polyurethane um, and, and there's other, you know, kind of ways to do it. We just go straight polyurethane. Hope that answers your question. Any other questions? That's the only question that? right now. Okay, so you can do Two coats, that's what we're going to do. You can do three coats, four coats, but between every coat, make sure you get a, that sandpaper out, 320 or 400. Give it a good sand. Wipe it all off. But remember, the key is surface prep. When you start and between each coat, make sure you get rid of all of that extra dust because once you put this stuff on there, if, if, if there's dust in there, game over. It's over. And Britt hates a dusty tabletop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not allowed in here. Britt? Yes, sir. You've done a great job. Thank you. So Anything just else? confirm, are you sanding between the coats? That is yes. exactly what we're doing. Yeah. Britt, what's your, do you like sanding between the coats? What's your favorite part, being done? I just enjoy the entire process. <laughs> I do. I like it all. That's what I'm talking about. Britt, give me one tip, since you do this every day, day yeah. in and day out, give me one tip. For the guy out there who's jumping in his garage today and needs to know, like, this is the best way yeah. to do this. So when we're doing this final pass on here, this final skin coat, yeah. so I'm going to overlap my brush to the coat I just did before, about a quarter of an inch. Ah, so it's like mowing your lawn. Yeah, just overlap the coats a little bit. Britt, is that a high gloss poly you're using? This is a clear satin, so it's a low, low Brit. gloss. Yeah. Back here, I'm also realizing this. We have all these paintbrushes hanging over. I'm going over by a couple minutes, but you're going to appreciate this. Why do we have all these different paintbrushes back here? Yeah, so we have different brushes for the different poly applications. So, okay. So we have a poly paintbrush and a poly stain brush. Um, so okay. depending on if the table is stained or painted determines what brush to use. And why do we do that? So we're just trying to keep the brushes clean. Um, there you go. Yeah, basically. Keep it clean. So Britt, after doing this for a while, has realized you dip the poly brush into the same bucket as a tabletop that's stained, and then you go and use that same brush and same poly bucket on a tabletop that's painted white. 
you're going to get some brown residue in there. It's kind of inevitable. So we literally go to the extent of we have seven different buckets of polyurethane, and one will be like polyurethane for white paint, polyurethane for anti-brown stain, polyurethane for gray stain, polyurethane for this. We keep all of our buckets of stain separate, and then we keep all of our paint brushes separate. So you'll notice on this one, this one says poly paint. That brush is used only for when we're polyurethaning a painted surface. That way we don't get anything mixed up, keeps everything clean, and uh, makes Brit Likes easier. That's right. One last question one last real question. quick. Um, yeah. How do you clean the brushes so they can be reused once you're done? Brit, yeah, so we, we clean just with water and a dish soap. And uh, we have, if you see it, we have a, a brush right there with uh, metal bristles. So we use that. Uh, brush the brush out, uh, clean it, and dry it. Um, so it's all about drying it. And that's kind of the beauty of using water-based uh, uh, polyurethane, too, is that it's a lot easier to clean up. The fumes are not awful. It's really the way to go, yeah. I think. Yeah. We have gone Pretty over good. 10 minutes. Have but we? I mean, it's going by really quick. I could keep going, yeah. but I think our audience would be bored. Yeah. Hey, last week... Britt and I and the rest of our team here at Heart Design Co. and my beautiful wife, Kelly, we all finished filming uh, our uh, next episode on the DIY Network, which we're super excited about. We don't know when it's going to air yet, but as soon as we do find out, we will let you know. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter at Heart Design Co. Uh, or uh, you can find me, Clint Harp, on all those uh, platforms as well. That's it. Britt, got anything else? I have, I have nothing. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. That's right. Okay, we're out. Thank you guys for hanging in there and watching. I hope this answers some of your questions when you jump into your garage and you try and finish something with polyurethane. Good luck. Okay, see you later. See ya.